I'm Shane Kale with SEM Connections. I'm going to walk you through the component substitution functionality in SAP IBP. For the demonstration today, I'm going to walk you through an example of a soda manufacturer that produces lemon-lime soda at one of their bottling plants. In this example, I have a demand for 100 units of lemon-lime soda from a grocery store customer. For producing lemon-lime soda, I use a primary can component with 50 units currently on hand in inventory. Since I don't have enough time to procure more of these cans, I can only produce 50 units of soda using these cans. Therefore, I still need 50 more cans to meet my customer demand of 100 units. However, let's say that I have a secondary supplier for cans with 50 units currently on hand in inventory. In IBP, I can specify that the substitute cans can be used in the event of a shortage of the primary cans to satisfy customer demand. That way, I can meet my customer demand of 100 units by utilizing both my primary and substitute cans in my production process. Now let's take a look at how this functionality works in IBP. I first need to create my Bill of Materials master data and specify which materials can be used as substitute components. In this example, I have a bill of materials for lemon-lime soda that is produced using aluminum cans, labels, and soda mix. For aluminum cans, I have a primary and substitute can, with the substitute can being marked as a substitute component. The next step is to specify in my substitute master data table which components can be used to substitute primary components in the event of a component shortage. In this table, I have specified that in lemon-lime soda production, the substitute cans can be used for production when there is a shortage of primary cans. Now let's walk through an example of how IBP calculates substitute component usage. In this example, I have a customer, Midwest Grocery, that has a demand of 100 units of lemon-lime soda per week. When I review my inventory, I see that in the current week, I only have 50 primary cans in stock. I also see that my lead time to procure cans is one week, and therefore I don't have enough time to procure 50 more primary cans to satisfy my customer demand of 100 units. However, I can see that I currently have 50 substitute cans in stock that can be used for making lemon-lime soda. To satisfy my customer demand, I can run the optimizer in IBP to calculate the required number of substitute cans to be used to satisfy the remaining demand for the Midwest grocery customer. In my supply view, I can see that the optimizer calculated dependent demand of 50 units for both my primary and substitute cans in week one. Then beginning in week two, I have enough lead time to procure enough primary cans to satisfy demand for all weeks in the future. Finally, I'll review the results for my Midwest Grocery customer and see that they are receiving enough units of lemon-lime soda to satisfy their demand. Based on the results of running the optimizer, I can see that demand in week one and beyond is 100% satisfied thanks to my component substitution setup. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.